When it comes to shooting video handheld, what I like to do is shoot with fast prime lenses, but since they don't have any stabilization, I have to turn on IBIS in-camera image stabilization. Just a few years ago, this kind of thing seemed impossible because either you needed to rig up your camera very heavy to be able to shoot handheld without having any micro jitters or shakes visible, or you needed a lens with OIS, optical image stabilization. While this type of magic technology probably sounds like a dream come true, there are a few things to consider when it comes to using IBIS. When turning on the IBIS in the camera's menu, there isn't much you need to do because most lenses are automatically recognized and stabilized. It doesn't matter if they already have optical image stabilization or no stabilization at all. But what you need to do if you use third-party lenses or especially manual lenses without any electronics, then you need to set the focal length manually. Otherwise, you will get some shaky results as you can see in this shot. One of the biggest advantages when it comes to using IBIS is for certain using prime lenses because that used to be a real struggle, especially when using small mirrorless camera like what I often use. And now it's very easy. Just make sure you turn the IBIS on and then you can get some great results when shooting video handheld. Monopods are quite commonly used for news and documentary work, but having in-camera image stabilization pretty much eliminates the need for that. And even if you had a little bit too much coffee, as long as you frame the shot, the camera does all the work and makes sure the shot looks steady. Getting rock steady results can be very important, especially when shooting with a telephoto lens like this, because if you have a windy day, it can definitely ruin a shot. Having OIS and in-camera image stabilization can make sure the shot is rock steady. 5-axis in-camera image stabilization is definitely a great technology, but sometimes you also need to turn it off. For example, when using a wide-angle lens, it doesn't matter if you shoot handheld or on a tripod. The problem is that the field of view is so wide that the sensor struggles and in the end you're gonna get weird wobble effect in the edges, so that doesn't look very nice. And the motion, the movement is also delayed, especially when doing camera pans. When it comes to mounting the camera somewhere, for example, onto a car and the car is still visible, it also makes sense to turn off the IBIS because otherwise there's still going to be some funny motion because obviously the sensor tries to correct all the shakes, but since the camera is mounted onto the car, it will be visible. To get the best results when panning or tilting the camera on a tripod, it makes sense to turn off the IBIS because a lot of cameras fight the motion when it comes to panning or tilting. So definitely turn it off as you can see in this shot that was captured with a telephoto lens, a quick pan. It looks very awful. So there's definitely no reason to use IBIS in this case. For long exposure time-lapse photography, it also makes sense to turn off the IBIS because if you expose for a couple of seconds, the sensor will move around and create a blurry image. So in the end, it rather makes sense to turn it off. Something else to consider when it comes to video stabilization is stay away from IBIS. Use a camera that has no internal image stabilization, but rather use zoom lenses that have optical image stabilization, because right now most of these will still give you smoother results, especially if you shoot handheld. If you do a lot of motion handheld, the results will definitely better, but it's just a matter of time until IBIS will get as good as OIS. Another thing to keep in mind is, a good story doesn't always need camera movement. That's it from me and I'll see you next time.